Hi guys, it's Heather, the Butterfly Effect, plant-based weight loss. And today is Wednesday, and that makes it weigh in Wednesday. And that's the day I come on here and I make a video and I weigh in about what's going on in my life and I weigh in and let you know what's going on on the scale. And just come and check in with you guys. Check in for accountability and all that good stuff. So this week I am coming to you from the couch of sickness and doom. <laughs> <coughs> I am sick again, and I don't know if it's from flying on a plane from Palm Springs to <laughs> Fuzz wants to be in the video. Hey, Fuzz. Hey, Fuzz. You want to be in the video? <laughs> Fuzz is my grand dog. <laughs> Fuzz is a whirling dervish, so <laughs> you're probably going to see more of Fuzz in this video. I don't know. Are you going to be in the video, Fuzz? Are you going to be in the video? <laughs> Anyway, Fuzz is crazy, but we love him, and I'm crazy, and he loves me, so it's only fair. So, I don't know if it's from being in Palm Springs, or if it could also be, you know, I do um, child care at a homeless shelter while their parents take classes, and my guys that I take care of are the zero to threes, so the babies and the... <laughs> Buzz, calm down. Calm down, buddy. Okay, so anyway, whatever reason, I'm sick. And so I'm eating lots of garlic lover soup, which is a Chef AJ recipe that has like <coughs> enough garlic to kill any vampire in it. <laughs> it's got like garlic and cruciferous crunch and tomatoes and zucchini and mushrooms and onions and I put in it some I put in lentils and um <laughs> he's being a nut okay there we go we're fuzzless now um I put in it some lentils and also some sweet potatoes because I think they're yummy so anyway um, been eating a lot of that and <laughs> he's back. <laughs> he's on my lap. Um, so hopefully I'll be over this cold really soon. Oh, he brought me his toy. That's why he's back. Cause, cause I have the toy and I have to take care of the toy. This is the most unprofessional video. I'm sorry, you guys. This is my life. Life with grand dog. <laughs> Fuzz is a rescue, and as you can see, he's really cute when he's, like, really challenging as far as he barks all the time, and he has all this energy, and we were his fourth home. My son adopted him after he had been in three different houses, and they returned him to the Humane Society, and we just told him that he, we're his forever home, and we will work with him. <laughs> And he will always have a place. He will never have to go back to the Humane Society. So anyway. <laughs> but okay. <coughs> back to my video. Um, So I'm not going to. Like I'm just going by last week's weight this time. Which was 178. Um, I did weigh in this morning. But it's it's off. And I'll tell you why. I had to have a colonoscopy. I had the joy of having a colonoscopy yesterday. And of course, before you have a colonoscopy, they have you um, both fast and also drink this disgusting, seriously disgusting gallon of this prep stuff. It's like horrifying. And um, it's very effective. And that's all I'm going to say. So anyway, my weight is off. Like I'm sure it's underestimating my weight and so I decided to just go I just wrote down the same thing that I was last week 178 and I will just um adjust it next week and it'll be my like two week total so I have I don't really know what my real weight is for this week and so one thing I did want to talk about um was having that test and it was funny that, um, so I had it because I have a family, his, I have a family risk 
that's more elevated because um, some members of my family, unfortunately, are dealing with that. And so I was just um, out of abundance of caution having the test. <coughs> Excuse my cough. And but the cool thing was that um, the gastroenterologist was really neat and he was really nice. And he was he asked me if I ate um a lot of vegetables and mm -hmm. or if I was mm -hmm. vegan and it was funny that he asked me right like mm -hmm. I said yes I do eat a lot of vegetables I eat a lot of vegetables and yes I am vegan and he said that he can kind of tell because people who eat a lot of meat have impactions like places where stuff gets stuck and then even when they get cleaned out he can see that they did have something impacted even after, you know, they've done their prep and everything's gone. And he said that I didn't have any of those. And then the other thing he said was that it was pink and vascular and that that is usually an indication that the person eats a lot of fiber. And I do. I eat a lot of salad. I eat a lot of fiber. So that was kind of cool that he could tell. And he said that he was a plant-based eater too. Um, and so that was neat and that was a good conversation. So, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were saying it's not fair because she gains weight really easily and her husband and she like eats really healthfully and her husband can seemingly eat whatever he wants and as much as he wants and he eats really terrible and he never gains an ounce and he... Um, is not always very supportive and kind to her when she gains weight and she feels like he's not understanding what a struggle it is for her and so easy for him. And <coughs> I just wanted to talk about that because sometimes it feels like maybe people are getting away with it. You know, like we're getting, like they're getting away with it. They don't, they don't have to wear their every mistake or they don't have to carry around these pounds of pain that really do affect your self-esteem and really do just affect you. But the truth is that, you know, um, what do they say? Like over 50%, around 50% of people that have heart attacks are only like 5% over a regular BMI, a normal BMI. So not even severely overweight, maybe just a little bit overweight, so that the point that, un, you know, you and I probably wouldn't even acknowledge them as being overweight because we're just so used to people being chubby nowadays. Um, so it can look like people are getting away with stuff, but, you know, if you look at it like people aren't, they, you know, one out of two people is going to have some kind of a heart attack that's going to be skinny people too. Um, some kind of cardiovascular disease, strokes, cancer, all those things, you know, it's going up and um, life expectancy is going down. And so it's just, they might pay in another way. They might pay in another way. I think about my poor father who, you know, six foot two, 170 pounds, worked out, ran, looked like a model. Like he did model. He did model for some men's stores and stuff like that. And he was a soldier at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, you know, and um, and had the classic physique. The You know, he was a gymnast and a skier. Anyway, the man had a sweet tooth. He had all sweet teeth. He loved sweet teeth. He loved... Like he could eat, it was no big thing for him to eat like a whole thing of ice cream or a whole pan of brownies. And he loved to eat ribs and like potato salad with mayonnaise and um, even his regular salads always had like rote for dressing or <coughs> Thousand Island or something, you know, some really high fat dressing. Anyway, uh, baked potatoes with butter and cream and all that junk on them. And, and he ate like that his whole life, and it always seemed like he was getting away with it, you know. He never put on an ounce. 
But then at the end of his life, um, after all those years of working hard for his family and saving up all his money and um, all that, he ended up with um, peripheral arterial disease, which is when you have so much plaque in the arteries in your legs that you don't have circulation. He ended up with multiple sclerosis, which a lot of people think is a lifestyle disease or at least is influenced by lifestyle. And he had vascular dementia. So he literally lost, you know, his memory and his control of like his personality and who he was. Um, all those things, all those things when he should have been having the time of his life. It's like he traded them for the ice cream and the brownies and the ribs and the steaks and the, and all the animal products. Um, so you would have thought his whole life because he wasn't fat, because he had a great figure, you know, for a man or whatever, have a great physique. Um, and because he was an athlete and he was able to do what he wanted to do, you would think, you know, he can do, he can eat whatever he wants and his body will forgive him. But the truth is that nobody is immune from the laws of physics and the fact that, you know, saturated fats are hard at room temperature and that stuff builds up and meat is full of heme iron which, you know, is very bad for you, um, and TMAO, which drives cholesterol right into the arteries, um, and eggs have choline in them, which again causes cancer. Just all these things are so cancer-causing, and then <coughs> they don't have any antioxidants in them to protect you from all those things that you're doing. Um, anything good that's in meat came from the plant that the animal ate. And all the bad stuff in, in meat is just inherent in the meat. It has iron we can't use. It has calcium we can't use. It has all these things that are actually just harmful to us. And they cause AGEs and acrylamides and other cancer-causing things, aging things, make you look old, make you feel bad. Um... And eventually steal your life, right? They steal your athletic function because your heart stops being able to work well. You get run down. You get debilitated. In my dad's case, it, he literally was, you know, in a wheelchair. And um, he ended up, you know, not being able to speak. Um, still knowing what was going on, but not being able to articulate anything. And... I hate to say it, but like in a room he hated, in a in a like a care facility that he hated, eating food he hated with all his freedom gone, and like only a TV for company. And of course, we came and saw him as much as we could, but um, it just is not a life anybody would want, and it's not a life. I think if you. It's so easy to be in denial and be like, I'll pay later. It's like the same thing with like credit cards or whatever, you know, you put, you charge everything on the credit card and you're like, I'll pay someday, but that day's not today, you know? And it's the same thing when you eat food that is bad for you, you're going to pay someday, you know? And it's better to just suck it up, buttercup. Learn to like the good, healthy food. You, it's hard for a lot of people to believe when they first start out that you can just love the taste of just simple, natural, steamed broccoli, carrots, and cauliflower, or, you know, a bowl of lentil soup, or, you know, that soup I described is delicious to me. Like, there's no sacrifice there because I've gotten used to it and I like it. But if you would have told me who ate, you know, all the junk food that I ate and the fast food that I ate, um, that someday I would be happy eating only what I'm eating now, I would have just thought you were a liar or you didn't, I mean, a mean part of me might have thought you were a liar, but mostly I'd be like, you don't understand how much I love this stuff um, and how addicted I am to it. And I wouldn't have believed myself either, you know, um, 
it's because we change. We literally change. I have systematically changed cell by cell in my body by building my body out of different stuff. And my tongue changed and what I ate, I adapted to so that now this stuff tastes good to me. Um, and I hope that that gives some people hope because, you know, first of all, we all have to take care of ourselves. Nobody's going to take care of yourself for you. Even people that look like they're getting away with something, they're not. <coughs> we all have to take care of ourselves, even if we keep just getting cold. <laughs> and, you know, nobody's going to make me rest except for me. No one's going to make me eat my veggie soup except for me. We all have to be self-managers. And the people who aren't paying now, they're going to pay later. It's, a, it's it's not a vindictive thing. It's just, it's just reality. You just... You know, they might get away with it for a long time, but eventually it creeps up on them. And a lot of times it hits them like a ton of bricks because they don't have the first clue of how to take care of themselves. So we all have to learn to take care of ourselves. And the stuff, if you're just starting out and the stuff doesn't taste good to you, or you're just like, I just can't give up X, Y, Z. I say, just push yourself to the edge of what you can do. Do your very best. Try not to be so all or nothing. If you mess up, just be like, you know what? I'm human and people mess up sometimes. And get right back on track as soon as you can. Just make sure that the next bite you eat is a healthy bite. Um, being so all or nothing and being so black and white, I'm on my diet or I'm off my diet, is is so non-productive it kills it probably kills people we have to get past that we have to be people who mess up and then go on to still try the rest of the day can you do that that's my challenge to you can you eat something off plan on accident never plan it because it'll happen on its own don't worry <laughs> but if you eat something off plan my challenge to you is just eat something healthy later on like if you ate the wrong thing for breakfast, eat a salad for lunch. Try to eat the rest of the day healthy. Try to salvage the day. Just like if you got a flat tire, you wouldn't go out and slash the other three tires. But we do that with our diet, right? So try to salvage the rest of the day. Don't be black or white. Don't fool yourself. Don't think that people are getting away with it, you know, getting away with it because they're not fat. They're not fat on the outside but it's going somewhere. It's going somewhere. Nobody defies the lies of physics and the lies of biology for all their life and get away with it. All right. I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful evening and I hope may you be perfectly imperfect. You know, maybe you'll be perfectly okay with being imperfect and forgive yourself and do your best. Because your best is good enough and little changes made really consistently do add up. They do make a difference. You know, I lost 300 pounds by losing one pound at a time. I just did it 300 times. That's all you have to do. Just do a little bit better than you did the day before. All right. I love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.